Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the show today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool made for marketers and business leaders who spend hours a day on content creation. Campaign Assistant will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. Craft personalized emails, ads, and landing pages in just a matter of minutes. Just pick the content type, add the key selling points, and let the AI take it from there. And the best part, it works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Thursday, March 2nd. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Juliet bennett Ryla, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're talking about what appears to be a major win for insulin. Yesterday, Eli Lilly announced it will lower the prices of its insulin products. What's happening? Why is this such a big deal? And why now? We'll get into that, but first, let's take a quick look at what else is going on in the world of business and tech. Let's get crackalacking. All right, first things first, OpenAI is open for business. The organization, which started as a nonprofit, but which now operates more as an organization with a capped profit, which helped it attract investors, launched a chat GPT AI for businesses. And this will let pretty much any company embed chat GPT functionality into its products. Early customers already include Snap, Instacart, Shopify. Snap is using the API for its My AI feature we discussed earlier on the pod this week. Instacart used it, I thought this was cool, to create Ask Instacart, which is a shoppable search feature that lets you ask things like, what's a healthy lunch for my kids? So pretty cool stuff here. And I think we're going to see a lot of companies just come out of this. It was also a big day for TikTok yesterday. The tech giant has announced new safeguards for younger users. So now users under 18 will have a 60-minute daily screen time limit in the TikTok app. Uh, They can extend that by entering a passcode, but the company says it'll force users to make an active decision to extend their time on the app. Meanwhile, though, the TikTok ban train is going full steam ahead. This week, the White House said it was giving federal agencies 30 days to delete TikTok from government devices. Canada and the European Parliament have already moved to do similar things. And yesterday, the House committee advanced legislation that could enable a TikTok ban by allowing the president to ban TikTok for sharing user data with the Chinese government. In response, TikTok said banning the app would effectively ban the export of American culture and values. And the bill would now need to be approved by the Senate to make its way to the president's desk. In other news, uh, this was not such great (laughs) news to see. According to the FTC, while the number of consumer fraud reports dropped 17% year over year to 2.4 million in 2022, aggregate losses totaled $8.8 billion, which is up 44% year over year. We also saw a big raise yesterday. Delta's 15,000 pilots voted to approve a contract that'll have them see 34% raises over the next four years. Also, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong came out with an op-ed yesterday saying the U.S. risks its financial and geopolitical standing if it does not embrace cryptocurrencies. And lastly, Lil Wayne, big check. The rapper sold his Miami house for $22.6 million. He bought it in 2018 for $16.8 million and previously owned one with a skate park and a shark lagoon. How about that? All right, Juliet. So according to the CDC, more than 37 million adults in the United States have diabetes. High insulin prices have long been a major talking point, a conflict, an issue in healthcare. But yesterday, there was actually some pretty welcome news from Eli Lilly, a pharmaceutical giant in this space. So... Can you fill us in on what's going on here? 
Yeah, so essentially Eli Lilly announced that it would uh, do a few things that should offer some relief to patients with diabetes. They're going to cap out-of-pocket insulin costs at $35 a month and cut prices of insulin products, including some of their top sellers, uh, by about 70%. Um, This is interesting because back when Twitter decided it was going to just let anyone buy a verified checkmark for eight bucks, a lot of people did that and created parody accounts. Among them, Someone did this with Eli Lilly and announced that insulin would be free, um, which got a lot of people talking about the topic. Mm. And not that they hadn't been talking about the topic before, but it became a big point of discussion. Um, Eli Lilly's stock took a slight dip. Elon Musk's Twitter had to cease its (laughs) checkmark verification process uh, at at the time because too many people were doing this. I remember that. Yeah, I I think the market cap of the company dropped like $15 billion that day. Right. But just shows you how big a deal it is. (laughs) Yeah. So. I, I guess what's what's interesting here is insulin, life-saving drug. A lot of people just simply cannot afford it. And that is a very uniquely American problem. About 1.3 million Americans apparently ration their insulin in 2022, which is dangerous. You can, you can die from that. Um, and at the same time, as Bernie Sanders will gladly tell you over and over again on his Twitter, Eli Lilly made about $7 billion in revenue that same year. So there's a lot of push from lawmakers to make these costs affordable for Americans. The reason it is so high in the United States, according to what I was reading in a great Vox article about this, is other nations, the drug companies will have to like negotiate with the government what price will be paid, but America functions on more of a free market system. So they will claim something like, this is the price of innovation. This is different insulin than the insulin that you got back in the 1920s, which... When insulin was invented, its creator was like, I don't want to profit off of this. No one should ever profit off of this. Yeah. Um, so it's just a really weird, like, there's, there's a lot that goes into this. But the bottom line is that people need it to live. So what's been happening lately, why is this all happening now? Uh, it would be fun to attribute it to the tweet, but there's actually a lot of other things going on. So for one, like I said, <laughs> lawmakers are really putting pressure for this to be affordable. The Inflation Reduction Act recently capped out-of-pocket costs to $35 a month for people on Medicare. And in his recent State of the Union, President Biden was like, we're going to expand this cap to all Americans. So there's that pressure there. You've got lawmakers uh, like Bernie Sanders, like I said, tweeting about constantly. And then for two, Eli Lilly was one mm-hmm. of just three companies that basically controlled the global insulin market. But now they've got competition because there's, there have been groups that have said, hey, uh, this is too expensive, so I'm going to come in and, and try to solve this problem. And among them uh, is Mark Cuban and his Cost Plus Drug Company and the entire state of California where lawmakers have earmarked about $100 million to develop a generic product that would not be so expensive. So I think the writing was kind of just on the wall for Eli Lilly, like, you got to do something because competition is coming. People are making fun yeah. of you on Twitter. Like, there's a lot happening for you right now. Yeah. And I'm not seeing a lot of people seeing this as a heartwarming gesture, uh, but more so as a thing that they were forced to do. I'm seeing a lot of people wondering how this cost will be passed on to insurers who, of course, will put it in our premium. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I don't think anyone's like, wow, you're the good guy all of a sudden. But um, I hope it, it provides some relief to some of these patients who were really having a tough time. Yeah. And bada bing, bada boom. That's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, you can go sign up at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have an awesome Thursday. We'll catch you tomorrow. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.